Hi friends, um, so today I want to take a, a minute and talk to you a little bit about uh, my journey through 3D printing and a little bit about uh, CAD CAM stuff, uh, mostly CAD. Um, and the things that I've kind of ran into and some of the pros and some of the cons of what's going on. And I'm talking to you not like an expert or anything else like this. I'm just a, a, a guy that's starting to get into this journey and I kind of want to share my experience with you. And maybe little things will help you out if you may be moving in that direction. Um, if you are a more knowledgeable person, please feel free to correct me. Maybe I'm saying things that are not um, necessarily true or correct. So I would love to get some feedback from this. So I started getting into 3D printing in, um, uh, closer t towards, I think, in the fall of 2019. And I started off, uh, first I was actually just using... Uh, CAD software. So I was using Mesh Mixer and 3Shape just to kind of playing with things and kind of seeing how things are working and I was just learning software and before uh, before I got into the 3Shape program I actually went to um, New Jersey uh, with a group of very good friends of mine from Canada and I took a course from 3Shape um, uh, from some wonderful instructors on how to use the denture modules. So I learned some of that and I was learning a little bit more at home and um, so eventually I kind of started getting into the actual 3D printing. So with 3D printing, here's my journey. Uh, I went off and I bought a uh, Anycubic Photon uh, printer which was at the time I think around 260 bucks, so fairly inexpensive. Actually the resin that I was buying was more expensive uh, than the actual printer was. and. Um, I don't know if I just got lucky or maybe maybe I was doing something right, but the prints were actually coming out pretty good. And I got to print, uh, this is not a dental resin, but I got to print little things like this in that little $250 printer. I mean, pretty good quality, pretty exact uh, dimensions. So I started from that, I started printing duplicate dentures. Uh, and duplicate dentures were fairly easy for me to print because um, I have a, a DOF scanner and the software for the scanner allows you to scan and make a duplicate of a denture, a digital duplicate of a denture fairly easily. Uh, you don't have to utilize any other programs like 3Shape or Mesh Mixer. You can do that all, all, of, all of it in, uh, in the software that it's part of the, um, uh, of the scanner. So I was doing that, I was making duplicates and I still do make dupl duplicates um, and I really like doing that because it allows me to do many, many things. Uh, I can do a digital try-in, which I don't actually do, or at least not very often. Uh, what I mostly make duplicate dentures for, if, if I have a patient who needs a new denture, uh, I try to make a duplicate denture and use that for like a reline impression, a bite registration that works really well. Uh, I used to do that manually, now I'm doing it digitally. Um, another thing that I do is I like, I really like making custom trays, uh, printed custom trays, because I really getting really good impression results with those uh, myself and uh, for the doctors that I may, I'm making these for. Um, scan guides. So I fabricate dentures the traditional way. Still cross packing and everything else and then uh, making a scan appliance uh, for the surgeries down the line. So really easy again take that denture, scan that in, fabricate a duplicate and then print it in clear. Um, surgical guides. Pretty much the same thing as a scan guide except you have to do a little bit more work. Um, I generally take that file, put it into Mesh Mixer and a friend of mine taught how to make uh, the windows uh, in the Mesh Mixer. I have recently actually saw Dora's post on the same subject and her workflow is actually easier than mine. I haven't tried it yet but the steps that she showed in Mesh Mixer they look like they would work uh, a lot quicker than what I'm doing. So I'm going to try that uh, down the line and see how that works. So, and base plates. So th these are the things that I'm currently fabricating using a 3D printer. So initially when I was using that Inacubic Photon, everything was going flawlessly, but there was no issues at all. And somewhere down the line, without changing anything, uh, the printer started just going haywire a little bit. Nothing major, but little things. It's just the parameters weren't as exact, and then there's just overflow and things like this. So I wasn't as happy with it. But at least I kind of got my start with that printer. So it was a little bit of money, 
from the printer side and I kind of got into see what 3D printing was all about and uh, kind of st start learning what things need to be adjusted, what things need to be done in order for things to work properly. Uh, and so I think about a couple of months ago I bought a frozen Sonic printer which is a, a, a little bit higher end, I think I paid around $1,400 or $1,500. It's a lot faster so any cubic photon would print a tray depending on the angle and the height obviously anywhere from six to eight hours so it took takes a while but since I was printing overnight it didn't really make that big of a difference to me because I would use the slicing software uh, prepare the print uh, take it to the printer put it in and the print would take overnight to do it, and then I would post process it well with this it takes a lot quicker I mean usually it takes two or three hours to get things done obviously there are even quicker printers than this but right now I'm talking about these two these are not necessarily dental printers uh, these are made for something else, um, but Frozen Sonic especially is kind of advertised as for dental purposes a lot. Um, things I've kind of run into, some of the issues that I've had uh, with this new printer. So these printers are not all exactly the same. So somebody has one uh, printer and you have the other one and the parameters are going to be a little bit off. And that creates a big problem, especially when you're printing. <laughs> because if somebody gives you the parameters for resin, it says like, it takes 1.5 seconds to cure this resin. And you try that on your printer and it's not working. Either it's curing too fast or not curing at all. Because of those deviations, you don't have a set standard. So you have to pretty much adjust the parameters to your printer and your printer alone. And if you're dealing with the several resins, it, it may take a while. You might go through a lot of resin <laughs> when you're doing it, as I did. Um, so those little things. Um, that, and then even before you start printing, you have to learn how to set things up in uh, slicer software. So the slicing software I'm using right now uh, is called Cheetah Box. Uh, it works fairly well for me, uh, for these two printers. It takes a while to kind of learn the orientations, the angulations, things like this. You also have to worry about supports and not just where to place the supports. The supports themselves have to be adjusted depending on the printer and depending on the print and depending on the resin um, I guess the depth of support and the contact diameter of support needs to be adjusted so a lot of times prints will fail because of this and a lot of times you look at things like something like this will happen right just did not print at all here and you have to ask yourself what happened did I use the wrong angle uh, did I use the um, uh, improper curing times, did I not do proper supports, did I not do enough supports, did I not know, do enough um, contact area or the size, things like this. And for me, being a novice um, in the subject, it's really difficult. Thankfully, there's a lot of people on Facebook and internet that kind of know this subject, and I have a lot of friends who are very knowledgeable in the subject matter, so I've been asking a lot of questions and trying to learn it myself as well, and adjusting things and trying to make things things work so so far it's been I would say okay it hasn't been great to be honest with you it's been okay but it definitely is a good stepping stone and it has helped me a lot um, to learn this process because I think in the future we're going to be doing a lot more things with 3d printing um, so let's say you've printed something let's say you've printed a base plate um, everything looks great there are no holes in it, everything is fine. You take it off, uh, you put it in the washing station. I'm using isopropyl alcohol myself, so I do three minutes in one bath, an ultrasonic, and then take it out uh, and put in a cleaner cleaner bath uh, with a uh, IPA for another three minutes. You've done that. Then you put it on your dehydrator for uh, 20 minutes, and I think I'm using around 145, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you've done that, you have to post-process light cure. Here comes the trick. Um, if you're like me and you don't have a proper post-processing curing unit, which are around, I think, around four grand, which I haven't bought yet, I'm going to buy one. There's a possibility, especially if you're using a clear resin, that you won't cure uh, post-process cure your uh, base plate properly. And this, uh, this is exactly what happened to me. So I was using a clear base plate because I thought they were cooler, which they are, obviously. <laughs> there's no there's no argument there. Um, and I did the wax rim. We did the bite. 
the case came back uh, for setup. I did the setup. I set the case out. And when the case came back from the try-in, something happened. The base plate worked. And I'm guessing it has to do with polymer chains and everything else like this. So if it wasn't cured all the way through, initially and post processing, I guess over time that final cure will happen, especially because it's clear the light will penetrate it more. And then uh, it warped the whole base plate, so it wouldn't even fit on the model. So you have to be cautious of things like this. So if you're doing base plates, probably not the best idea to do those out of clear. And if you are doing out of clear, you have to do proper post curing processes. So now if I'm doing base plates, I'm usually using pink. Uh, so oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So I do also uh, gothic arch tracers now digitally as well. Um, so I'm using either pink or white. The only time I'm using clear is either for surgical guide, which are tissue supported surgical guides, which are basically denture duplication, uh, or for scan guides. And I'm still watching those pretty closely. Um, so these are the things that I've kind of been dealing with so far. And hopefully, as things go further down the road, I will be getting a more advanced, a more um, higher end printer. Because it's getting to the point where I'm spending enough time doing this kind of stuff to where maybe it's becoming worth it to invest into a machine that's going to be always working to a certain standard. So I've been looking at the Segas. Um, they have really good quality. Uh, the only, uh, I mean, there's some parts that you have to be buying uh, for them, like the trays. Uh, but the quality of the prints that I'm seeing and the just how precise they are and everything else from my friends. I mean, it's a really, really good printer. So I think buying something like what I've been buying, it's a really good starting point. You can kind of get your feet wet in that way. But eventually, if you do enough of these cases and you want to have a workflow that's just reliable, that's the word I was looking for, a reliable workflow, you're going to have to buy a machine that's going to be reliable. Same thing with pretty much everything we do. I mean, you can boil out dentures in a pot, you know, or you can cure dentures in a pot. But if you want reliable resorts, you want to have a proper curing unit uh, from things like this. So I think that's about it, what I wanted to cover in this video and I want to talk to you about. It definitely is a very interesting process. It, there is a, definitely a learning curve, especially learning to design things. Um, but it is a lot of fun. And I have been getting a lot better results with uh, with the things that I've been doing. Um, I just need to adjust things and buy some more uh, advanced equipment as far as maybe not from the printer standpoint at this point, but at least a proper curing unit. So uh, that's going to be my next big purchase. Okay, hopefully some of this stuff has helped you guys. Uh, and I really hope that uh, it will kind of give you some direction. And like I said, if I'm doing saying something that is not correct, please feel free to correct me because I am definitely just starting out in this uh, in this journey, and uh, we will be more than happy to discuss this further with you guys. Okay. Well, I hope you have a great day, and I, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.